As you probably know, we got the first playtest document for 1D&D just last week. While I'll say that I'm mostly positive about the changes they've proposed so far, there is one aspect of the new options we got in that document that really irks me, and that is inspiration. If you like videos such as this one, please subscribe to the channel, like and comment and all that good stuff, and you can also follow us over on patreon.com. But enough of that, let's take a look at the new way inspiration works and why I feel that there's something inherently wrong with this new approach. So first off, the way that inspiration works now in 5e is that the DM can choose to give characters inspiration and it says that it's typically when the character acts in accordance with their background, flaw, personality stuff and so on. So it's basically a way for the DM to motivate the players to roleplay better. As you probably know, a character can spend an inspiration to gain advantage on an attack roll, ability check or saving throw and they can also give their inspiration to another player if they feel like that player deserves it more, but a player can only have have one inspiration at a time. Now inspiration has always been a bit of a weird mechanic to me because it's so dependent on the DM actually giving out inspiration. My experience personally that I'll not always play with inspiration. Some sessions I remember it, I'll keep giving it out. Some sessions I forget all about inspiration and just yeah forget to give it out. And I think I'm not alone in that. I see a lot of DMs either not playing with inspiration at all or quite many DMs changing how inspiration works in their, their games and I think that's fine because inspiration is a very loose mechanic it feels like it's not entirely part of the game's rules as much as for example ability checks and saving throws themselves are inspiration feels like it's more tacked on there as a semi-optional thing that the DM can use to sort of inspire the players. It's never been a huge problem because it doesn't interfere with the official rules. And that's where I think that the new character origin rules we've been presented really make some changes that I think could potentially be very problematic. First and foremost, in these new rules, you now get inspiration whenever you roll a 20 on a d20 roll, whether that's an ability check, saving throw, or attack roll. Notably, and this is important, the text still tells us that the DM can award inspiration to a character or player when they do something that's particular heroic or noteworthy. So just as before, you can use inspiration to award good role play. Secondly, we also see inspiration being tied into both the human race. So humans get an inspiration whenever they finish a long rest. And it's also a part of the musician feat, where a musician can give a character or several characters inspiration after a short rest. And I doubt that these are going to be the only two cases where we see inspiration pop up outside of their own little niche which could mean that inspiration is being tied to more character classes, race options, feats, and so on. Now, why do I think that this is an issue? First and foremost, because inspiration is now attached to a human race and musician feat, it means that if we alter how inspiration works, which is my belief that most tables do, then we also change how effective or how good or how bad these feats or classes or whatever have you are. If you take away inspiration, say it's not a mechanic anymore, the human obviously becomes a less good race to play. And the same of course goes with the musician feat, which would be almost useless without inspiration in the game. And now you might say, all right, but can't you just not remove inspiration from a game? And I'd say, sure, if it was a mechanic that I thought functioned as it should and from what we're seeing in these rules it simply doesn't because when we make it so that you either get inspiration for rolling a 20 on a d20 or whenever the dm decides to do it then we have something that is a understandable mechanical rule and something that is completely up to the dm and because we have inspiration tied to feats and races that also means that those feats races classes whatever effectiveness is heavily impacted by the choices the dm make because if you have a dm that just hands out inspiration like it's candy well, then it doesn't really matter that you're human, you get it after each long rest. And the same goes, of course, for the musician feat, because if all characters always have inspiration, then that feat is just not that good. And I hate, and I would hate as a player, to pick up a feat or choose a race, not knowing how good that choice is going to be in the game, because you don't want to end up with a dead feat or end up being a race that doesn't confer the benefits you thought it would. Okay, so let's just say that you could house rule this and say the DM just can't deal out inspiration willy-nilly, that's not gonna happen. You've sort of fixed that issue, you think? Sure. But the thing here is that tying it to rolling a d20 on an ability check, saving throw or attack roll heavily favors some types of characters and also just some styles of play or even decisions you can make in game. And for me, this is the biggest issue with these inspiration rules, because as I mentioned in the previous much longer video, if you got that far, 
you can just go out into the woods and start throwing fire bolts or just hacking with your sword against a tree or something until you've rolled enough 20s to give yourself and the rest of the party full inspiration. You can basically do that in five minutes of in-game time, making it so that for example, the musician feed is completely useless because old Bob here can just go out into the woods and hack with the sword until he's rolled 100 d20s. And then of course there's someone who'll say, well, my players would never do that. I can just tell them you're not allowed to do that. And that's true. And uh, I would advise you to tell them that because it's really cheesy. It's uh, against the spirit of the rules at the very least. But players could still sort of game this inspiration thing without crossing over a line where you'd have to forbid it. Maybe you have a curious character who just wants to know about anything, so he'll ask, what do I know about trees? Can I roll a nature check to see if I know about this sort of tree or that sort of flower or this type of animal? What do I know about the sky? Can I predict the weather? Which way is west right now? There's a ton of questions you can ask when you're a player that would allow you to roll a very simple or easy ability check and of course once you get that 20 you can stop asking questions or investigating everything or performing all the time or stealthing all the time or whatever have you until you've used that inspiration and then you start up again. Now once again someone will say well my players would never do that that's just really silly but is it though? Is it not just gonna lead to players and characters trying to just roll maybe a bit extra. Just get a few extra d20 rolls in there because they know that with every d20 roll there's a chance they'll get a minor advantage and they may not even be conscious of the fact that they're doing it. They may just start doing it as a habit because hey sometimes when I roll a d20 something awesome happens and I like that so I'll just keep doing that. It's human nature and I think embedding a rule that is so easily exploitable into the game just creates the potential at the least for player and DM conflict. Because if the players end up wasting a lot of time, your time, just rolling random rolls because they want to get that inspiration, that's just not fun. Or if they create builds in combat specifically to gain more inspiration and those builds in combat make more rolls which take more time and now combat is longer and slower because Bob here wanted to get inspiration a return of combat or something like that. Now I think I understand what they tried to do here. They wanted to create a mechanic that was fun, that rewarded rolling good on the dice, and that's always fun, and sometimes rolling a 20 doesn't really matter that it's 20 or 19, so getting inspiration when you do that is a really fun thing. I, I can see the fun in it. Maybe they even wanted that mechanic to buff martial characters because they typically get to roll more attacks in combat. Maybe they just wanted to do something that was fun and created better balance, but the way it ends up affecting or potentially affecting how the game is played is to me very, very dangerous. Giving out inspiration whenever we roll a 20 needs some sort of barrier language, some sort of clarification for how that can look, some sort of limiting on it. And I don't know how I would type that up. I don't know if it's like, could you only gain inspiration once per hour and stuff like that? Because even if you do that, you'd still have probably people trying to get inspiration more often and you don't get that benefit that master classes would get where because they're rolling more d20s they'll get more inspiration. So basically what I'm trying to say is that I think they missed the target with inspiration in the new character's origin for one D&D. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Am I correct? Do you see some holes in my logic? Did I miss anything? Do you have a suggestion for how they could make inspiration better or is it just time to move away from inspiration as a whole? Is it sort of a gimmicky mechanic that was never really good to begin with? Please let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. And you can also support us over at patreon.com slash where we put out new encounters for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons and a lot of other cool content. We have a huge archive of content as well. And you also get to help decide which videos we make. Beyond that, there's not a whole lot left to say, except thank you so much for watching. And I hope that I'll see you in the next video.